Hey guys, today we're going to be working on this 2007 Toyota Prius. And the thing we're going to be changing is the brake actuator, which is in there somewhere. And so the issue that's happening is at random times, the brake actuator fails and then there's no brakes. Well, there are, but they're very hard to push and it's a pretty scary moment when you lose your brakes. And so looking online, the thing that comes up over and over again is the actuator. So I went ahead and bought another used one. Now you can buy a new one, but they're around $1,000 or more. So if you're willing to spend that much, it's probably probably worth purchasing a new one because this car is quite old and not worth much anyways I didn't want to invest too much money into it so in this video we're gonna remove everything step by step including the actuator and then installing the new one back in alright so the first thing we want to do is we want to take out all these clips here and that'll remove the shroud so once all the clips are out the shroud should just pop right out just like that and when we take that off we can see that all of this opens up and your vehicle will probably not look this bad this is all rusted now before we continue anymore I totally forgot about the most important part and that's disconnecting the high voltage batteries so in the back if we open our trunk so once you take the tray out you'll see the main battery here and there's a plug right here for the main voltage pull that up and then push it down and that'll unplug the plug and this disconnects the main voltage battery now what we also want to do is take this panel off and here we're gonna find our 12 volt battery and we want to go ahead and disconnect that so we'll need to pop off this red cover so you can either take it off the terminal or you can just unplug these two wires here so there's one small one on this side and a large one right here and so that'll completely disconnect the positive all right so now that we disconnected all the power to the vehicle we can safely work on this inverter and start disconnecting it so inverter is held on three points one bolt here mine's broken another one here and then there's one in the back down there and if you stick your hand down there you can be able to feel it it's the same kind of bolt as over here so we can go ahead and get those three bolts out and then we'll start unplugging everything and I'll kind of go step by step for that all right guys so all the bolts are out and the one in the back could be a little bit difficult because you have a little bit of room here to work with but obviously not impossible so once those three bolts are out this thing just moves around quite easily so the only thing holding it is just all the wiring and hoses around so for the next part we just need to start unplugging things and also releasing some brackets here and there so we could release this bracket here and then unplugging this plug and obviously we can unplug this plug here and then we have a few really large plugs right here that also unplug and these are not that hard there's a little tab that you push and then this comes out just like that so you can see that's the plug so there's one and then two I don't know if you guys can see but there's two more gray plugs right there that have to be unplugged also so quite a few things to unplug but pretty straightforward overall and also this bleed valve here the bracket on that bolt needs to come out now ultimately what we're gonna do is we're not gonna completely remove the inverter what we're gonna do is kind of disconnect as much as we can and then kind of set it to the side so we can get to the actuator alright guys so I'm making some progress I got this plug unplugged remove the bracket remove the little bleeder that's down there unplug this sensor and maybe you guys can see so there's there's two gray plugs and then there's a black plug right there that plugs in and I think that's all the plugs in the back now the hard parts are not over and the reason for that because we have to disconnect the high voltage wires and they're actually in the front here and also the back right here you can see this large wire so in the front one you can see there's a bolt here and a bolt there and that just loosens the bracket the wires themselves actually connect inside the inverter inside this cover same thing for here there's a bolt here and another one on the other side and that's just the bracket you still have to disconnect it inside this cover so the next part would be to take off all these bolts that go around the cover and and back there is the hard part because you can barely reach it now when you disconnect all the wiring you could slide this around here and there and even pick it up and make room for yourself kind of to get in there but it's still tight but it is possible obviously so I'm gonna go ahead and undo all these bolts around and then we'll take the cover off alright so I got all the little bolts out all around and also I removed the two bolts on the brackets on each of the main cables so now we should be able to just lift this off and sure enough it comes right out just like that and here we can see the inverter and all the components so it's probably not a good idea to touch all these high powered connectors here but technically it should be quite safe but you never know so be very careful I'm gonna wear these pretty thick leather gloves just in case that should isolate me somewhat in case there's any residual power in here but what we're doing is we're disconnecting the main plugs so there's one two three bolts here and then there's one two three bolts over there so once you get those bolts out the plugs just drop out same thing here it'll just slide out as long as you got the bracket bolts out also all right guys so I got the bolts out and I went ahead and pulled this one out and you can see it down there laying so it just slides right out and the bolts are out of that one so we can go ahead and slide this one out 
There it goes. So it just slides out and there's a little gasket that's on the end of it and that's what protects it from moisture getting in. But yeah, it's simple as that and our main plugs are out. So there's a few things we still have to disconnect and it's right here on this wiring harness. It's coming in here on the side. So there's one, two, three plugs here. All right, so the plugs are unplugged and I think we're pretty much ready to move this out of the way. Now, you can't completely remove this thing because you're still connected to the coolant system here and you have a tank right there. Now you could disconnect the tank maybe, but you know, you got coolant holes going straight into the inverter. So the best thing to do instead of making, you know, a lot of trouble for yourself draining coolant and all that stuff is to just pick up the inverter and then kind of just put it right here on the front where it's out of the way of the actuator where we're trying to get to in the back there. So hopefully here you can see, I'm just gonna grab it. It is quite heavy, so be careful. And I'm literally just gonna move it out of the way. Now be careful with these hoses here not to pinch them or twist them too hard. But I am twisting them right here. But as you can see, you can just sit right here, right on the side on the front. And so all we did is we just raised it and twisted it this way. So you can see this is the back and it's just sitting right there and, and it's not gonna fall or anything and you know, the hoses are still connected here. And we're not really kinking anything too hard. We're just kind of twisted around. All right, so now that our inverter's out, you guys can see how much room there is here and we can see the actuator and it's right there. So it's still hard to get to because it's quite underneath there. You can kind of see it's way underneath there, but obviously a lot more possible now. Now at this point, things get quite tricky because we have to disconnect all of the brake lines and then disconnect the main plug on the top. And the brake lines are harder than you would think because here we can see on the one I bought here that they just cut them right off because it's obviously too tedious to try to you know unscrew all of them. And you can see we have another brake line right there on the top. So if we set this thing just like we can see it in the car, it goes like this. We have four brake lines here and then one on the top right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all the lines, unplug the plug, and then we're gonna have to figure out what the best way to remove it from this frame. So there is a frame here that holds it and there's a bolt here, a bolt down there, and somewhere over there, another bolt, so. And also guys, we do have this little hose here. All right, so I'm gonna start working on that and uh, I'll let you guys know what I did and how it comes out. Now don't forget, because we're gonna be undoing the brake lines, you're gonna have some leakage going down. You wanna put some kind of cardboard underneath. Well, let me go ahead and show you guys how to take this plug out. So there's this white piece here and what you need to do is we need to just pry it open like that so it just kind of slides out. So once it slides out, the plug can unplug. So make sure you pull it all the way out. So. And there it goes. So now that our plug is out of the way, you guys can't really see, but back there is one of our brake lines. So I realized I need to do a few more things. So first of all, I removed this bracket, which connects right there, and it just kind of goes up out of the way. And then I realized I need to get this out of the way, so there's a plug right there, and on the back there, you can see it unplugs. And then there's two bolts right over here, and then one over there, and this whole thing kind of moves out of the way. I'm just gonna put it out of the way here so I have more room to work over there. And the main thing I realized is that I need to drain the brake fluid first before I undo all of these because there's gonna be a lot of liquid coming out. So I got this little water bottle right here and I'm gonna undo this hose here pull it out and hopefully be able to drain most of it in there and that's probably gonna drain the whole tank here. And you guys can see it's draining in there and it looks like a water bottle is probably barely enough. All right, making pretty good progress. I got all the brake lines off and the one on the top also. So there's a little bracket here that holds this line here. And then there's another bracket right there. You can see that and it holds all of these lines. So after all these lines are out, technically the pump is ready to come out. Now it's still connected on this frame right here. So there's, I guess a couple ways you can get it out. There's two little screws here. And I think if you take both of them out on each side, I think it slides out, but I'm not sure how easy that would be, especially reaching the other side seems impossible. And the only other way is to get these three bolts out, one here, one over there, and then another one. You guys can see it, but it's way back there in the background. And I think that one you'd have to go through here somewhere on the top. Might have to even take this out, I'm not sure. So quite a challenge so far. I'm not sure why they didn't make it a little easier to get to, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna try to mess around with it and I'll let you guys know how I pull it out. All right guys, so after poking around a bit and trying to figure out how to get this thing out, I realized that those little bolts on the side, I'm not gonna be able to do that because I can't reach the back. So I went for these three bolts here. So I 
got this one out, the one back there out, and then maybe you guys can see the threads back all the way down there by the firewall. That's the third bolt. So that was definitely a little hard, but not that bad because once you get this fuse box right here out of the way, you can stick a pretty long extension cord and reach it. But there is something else that needs to come out, and there's a little 10 millimeter bolt that holds all those pipes and tubes right there on a bracket. So yeah, that was a little bit hard also. But in any case, um, technically it should be loose now. So let's go ahead and try it. Okay, so yeah, there it goes. Now we're just gonna have to be really careful with all these hard pipes on the brake lines. So there's four here, and then one here, and then um, don't forget the one on the top also. All right, so I'm gonna work on massaging that thing out this way, and uh, hopefully it'll come out, and we'll take a closer look on how it mounts. So yeah guys, you can see I'm having progress. So the hardest part is trying to get all these brake lines around this thing so it can come out and just plugs and things like that. So, But it does come out quite freely, just kind of, you know, have to massage it out of there. So now we should be able to just grab the whole thing. Quite a large and heavy piece together with the frame. And there's another piece of metal here on the bottom. And I think this is some kind of vibration suppressor that mounts down here that also has to come out from under there. So yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky, but you know, I was definitely nervous scratching all these up a little bit. But yeah, definitely take your time and massage it out of there without too much force. Because breaking one of these lines would be really hard to replace. First of all, you'd have to get another one and then you have to track it where it goes and replace that whole piece. In any case, it's out. So now we can cut this bolt loose here. And the other one on the other side, the one I couldn't reach, maybe there's a way to get to it, but you can see it's really tight. And this thing's literally against the wall there. So once these two are loose, the pump should come out. But actually, guys, this bolt here also holds the accumulator. So I thought there was just these two, but there's one here also. All right, so the pump's almost loose. Now we just have to take these three bolts out here. And that should cut this counterweight loose. It's actually just these two bolts, guys, and it comes right out. So that third one is not needed to come out. All right, so now the frame should just come right off of it. And there we go. So our old pump is out. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly what went wrong with it, but I think the motor in it is just tired or quit working, but it just randomly works. I'm not sure if that's the issue or not, but in any case, so I'm going to go ahead and unscrew all these older fittings. And before I do that, I need to clean around the bolt so there's no dirt that gets in it. And then we'll put it on the bracket and install the weight underneath and it'll be ready to go back in. Alright guys, so I got everything back on the frame. The weight is back on, so everything is looking pretty good and I actually put little paper towels in the holes that way no dirt can get in it while I try to fit it in there so once I get it in there I'll just pull out the pieces of paper and that'll prevent any kind of debris getting in well it looks like I forgot to cover one of them so yeah just like that that's what I did so then later I can just pull it out alright so now we just gotta work in reverse order stick that back in there and then start reconnecting everything again we want to be very careful with the brake lines once we do all this so just take your time and feed it in there slowly while moving everything around all right, so I fitted it in there. It was a little bit tedious. I had to kind of wiggle it in there, but so yeah, our bolts are ready to go in. So one nut goes there, a bolt goes there, and another bolt way back there where you can only go through here to get to it. So I'm gonna tighten those up and then go ahead and start putting all the other things back onto it, like this pump and then the bracket back there. And also I'm gonna go ahead and connect all these brake lines. All right, guys, so progress is going pretty good. I put all the hard lines on, this rubber one, put all the mounts on, put this pump back on here, there's two bolts, plugged it in. And so as I was putting all this back, I was thinking that maybe I should go ahead and put some fluid in here because this hole here goes to the bottom of the reservoir and I'm gonna leave my top brake line there. It's not tight completely and it's loose. So I'm thinking about putting the fluid in so it'll fill up the whole actuator. And then as it gets to the top, all the air will be released through there and then when it starts seeping out, then I'll tighten it real quick. And the reason I wanna do that is because I want to eliminate as much air as I can in the system. That way later it'll be easier to get rid of it. All right, so I got some dot three brake fluid. Let's Go ahead and put some in there and I'm just gonna put a little bit and I'm gonna look at that top brake fitting over there until it starts seeping out so right now it's running into here and so I'm hoping it'll you know push the air up all right so it started seeping out so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up and yeah hopefully that'll get some of our air out of the system and then after that I'm gonna plug in the electrical plug so make sure you go over really well that everything is back where it was and then we'll start putting the inverter back into its place. Alright guys, so I double checked everything and make sure everything is good and I'm gonna go ahead and put the inverter back in. And you guys can see here the three plugs. There's a black one and two gray ones. And then we got these two yellow ones here. Alright, so it's set back down just where it needs to go. 
So obviously we can move it around to get to all the connectors. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect the high voltage cables. Well, actually, it would probably be easier before connecting this high voltage cable back here is to go ahead and connect these little plugs. Just make sure that if you do plug them in, you're not tugging on them too hard where they can, you know, potentially ruin the wire or stretch it. So yeah, we're just going to plug these in, put the high voltage cable in, and then the high voltage here. And then we got another plug here, and we also have this bleeder valve that goes right here. So yeah, just working in reverse order. All right guys, so once you get everything plugged in inside the inverter, so the two main cables, and then these little guys here, and there's like this rubber piece that goes down into here, we can go ahead and put the cover on. So you definitely don't want to mount the inverter yet. That's the last thing we do because we won't be able to get the cover on unless it's loose and we can move it around because it's quite hard to reach those bolts if it's already bolted to where it's supposed to be. So the cover has a gasket on the bottom, so make sure that's nice and straight. And also there's a little plug here that plugs into there, so. But yeah, but overall this thing's quite easy to put back in. Pretty much just falls into place. Then we got a little tab here that it goes into. So yeah, I'm gonna put all the bolts in the cover back on. Then we're gonna mount it. Also gonna connect the sensor here. And there's one more gray cable I haven't connected because it's just right over the hole that I need to put the bolt in. All right guys, so everything is back on. So all these little bolts are tight. All the plugs back there are plugged in. This little plug is plugged in. These bolts in the front are tight. This plug is plugged. So yeah, just go over and check everything and make sure everything is where it needs to be. So even though this was a pretty big job, as you guys can see, it's definitely possible. And it took me about, what, three and a half to four hours to do all this. Of course, I'm filming at the same time. So, but expect, you know, about that time, maybe more. And worst case, a whole day, just in case if you want to take your time. So yeah, now that we got everything back in, so the next thing we really need to do is add brake fluid to the reservoir and then start the bleeding process. Now you can do manual bleeding through the front brakes. That works pretty good. But since this thing is electric, a lot of the bleeding procedures are electronic and you will need a special program to do that. So at this point, you might want to get somebody to do it. So at this point, if you can't bleed it yourself or it's not working out, you might want to take it to somebody that knows how to bleed it or has the computer or even to a dealer if you want to go that route. But I'm going to try to bleed it at home and see how that works. And obviously we can go ahead and put this trim back in. And yeah guys, we're practically done. All right, and so now we can put our plug back into the high voltage battery. And that just simply just goes in there, it clicks in, and then you have to push it down. So don't forget to actually push it down. If you don't push it down, it won't connect. And also our main battery wires here. So now if we open the door, our actuator should come on. So let's go ahead and do that. And sure enough, it is. I can hear it. You guys can hear that. It's kind of making weird noises. That's probably because it has air in it. But it does seem to work. So I'm going to go ahead and pump the brake a little bit. Oh yeah, it changed the sound right away. So we're not turning on the car yet. Okay, I can feel it's built up pressure now. There it goes. And so the pump built pressure and it stopped. So it seems to be working. Open and close it again. But we definitely need to bleed the brakes next. And so I'm doing all these things before I even turn the vehicle on. And the reason I don't want to turn it on yet is because we don't want the computer to go all crazy and say, you know, there's something wrong with the vehicle until we can get as much air or all of the air out of the system. And so what you're going to do is you're going to turn the steering wheel to the left side to get to the left bleeder valve on the brake. And then you're going to need something like this. This one's called Bleed-O-Matic Brake Bleeder Kit. And you're just going to use one of these tubes. But this little bottle here is probably too small for me. I'm just going to use a tube and then I'm just going to use a water bottle, an empty one, to drain into there. So if you've never bled brakes, you probably want to go check out a video on that. So for this process, it does take two people, one at the driver's seat to pump the brakes. So what they're going to do is they're going to pump it until it gets really hard and then hold it down all the way while another person releases the valve here and it'll drain out. And regardless, if you take this car anywhere to get it professionally bled, you might want to go ahead and do this if you can. That way you have some kind of brakes and functioning at least. And that way you might be able to drive the car to where you need it compared to, you know, having it towed. All right guys, so after bleeding the brakes, we've been using this car for about a week and a half now, non-stop, and there has been no issues whatsoever with it. And it's actually on right now. So yeah, nothing really changed from the first time when we first tried it out. It's still staying silent, and usually for a very long time until it actually runs again. So I definitely feel like I got lucky with that pump because I know that sometimes when you buy them used, it doesn't always turn out good. And for the amount of work that you gotta put in to take it out and replace it is quite labor intensive. If you don't do it yourself, you're gonna 
to pay somebody and you know if you install a bad pump unfortunately you just wasted all that money and labor but since I was doing it myself and making a video for you guys it was worth it for me to take that chance it all worked out now I still think I need to bleed the whole system correctly just in case there's any air in there the way it is now it seems like there's no issues and I think bleeding the whole block as we did through the top helped a bit all right guys well hopefully this video helped you out and if it did then hit that like button I got a bunch of other videos on this generation Priuses with a bunch of other repairs and maintenance things I did with this car and other cars like this so if you're interested in that check out the playlist all right well thanks for watching catch you later